Welcome to the Orthopedic Indications channel, where we discuss medical education for medical sales consultants and reps. Yeah, that's good. Um, we are running a little short on time, but I do want to show this uh, type of uh, instability case because I think it's I at least get kind of some uh, thoughts. This is a 42-year-old uh, middle school teacher uh, who presented with left lateral ankle pain and feeling of popping and snapping. And I'm going to show his kind of zoomed in views here in a second. But if you look at his uh, fibula on the lateral side, you see this little flex sign, what we call a flex sign. Uh, and the flex sign is right here. It probably doesn't show well on your screen, but it's got this little area of calcification or uh, bone that's kind of sitting outside of the fibula. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because we kind of think of that as a something that, you know, a sign that if, until proven otherwise, they have perineal tendon dislocation. Uh, ben kind of alluded to it earlier that perineal tendon dislocation could certainly happen. I can't recall if he had a specific injury. I, I want to say that he did. Um, but uh, but nonetheless, he kind of presented with pain popping on the on the lateral side of the ankle. Um, and that's what, you know, brought him into clinic. And so you know, this is a case, I'm just going to, you know, spill the diagnosis for the sake of time in which we have perineal tendon dislocations. And you can see the axial imaging here, which shows it really quite well, where you see these perineal tendons here. Um, and you can see how there's one right out here in particular, that's kind of squirted around the outside of the part of the fibula and sitting in basically kind of this pseudo groove, pseudo sheath. You can see it down here in the middle image, and you can see it here on the T2. Uh, weighted images as well. So uh, perineal tendon dislocations, um, uh, Jan and Ben, I'm interested in like how you're managing a couple more MRI cuts, but how are you managing these uh, particular cases? Yeah, I, I'll go. So basically, I make incision posterior board of the fibula, incise it longitudinally, do a periosteal flap. I do the Anderson indirect fibular groove deepening. So I drill and basically retrograde ream the fibula, and then I tamp down the back in order to make a deeper groove. Um, and then I pass uh, three uh, strands of suture in a horizontal mattress fashion to repair that 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 SPR. Uh, and then again, periosteal flap, rotational tissue transfer. I put that periosteal flap over the redundant SPR and close it down. Jan, how are you managing these? I do it the same way. I like I like that technique. Um, you know, I, I've used it now. That's that's basically what I use routinely, and I think it's worked well in my hands. Um, how how much? How do you decide how deep to make that groove? I mean, you think okay. you need to make it deep enough that the tendons sit in a reduced position, even like kind of taking them through a range of motion. Um, I don't know what the number is, uh, but it's always, it feels like it's more than I was anticipating as I kind of get, get into, into it. Um, ben, do you have any tips on what you look for? Hit it as hard as I can and hope it's deep enough. And I would tell you the, the uh, I, I agree with Nick. I take it in dorsiflexion version and they should be stable before I repair the ligament. Uh, yeah. And I've been shocked because I feel like I make deep grooves. And a couple of times I've gotten a repeat MRI or CT or a couple of real, like I've had a few that have re recurred. Um, I'm always shocked at how not deep the groove is. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was deeper. Last thing I'll say is, a lot of times in this case, I find the CFL ligament is actually holding the tendons out of position after yep. I deepen the groove. So I will cut the ligament. I've never seen that described anywhere, but I just noticed it. So I do it. Sounds like Nick's noticed the same thing, but I've never seen that described. Have you guys? Uh, Joe talked about it I just released the soft tissues. Yeah. 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 There's like some tissue. There's something there, CFL, PTFL, yeah. that seems to kind of push on the, on the tendons as well. I totally agree. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I have done this, but I can never feel like I get it deep enough. So even after I do the indirect, I find myself taking a burr to it and smooth and kind of cutting a deeper trough. And so I've honestly just, most of the time I use a burr and I hold everything out of the way and I kind of cut a trough and then I use the power rasp to smooth it all down. And I've, I've tried both of them. I don't know that I've seen a big difference from one to the next. Um, but you know, I've certainly, uh, respect the heck out of, uh, 
you know, the work that Dr. Anderson does and, and his techniques. This is kind of, you know, you can kind of see here uh, when you open the sheet, this is before you open the sheath, you can kind of see the perineals like sitting sublux and then kind of pushing them, pushing them back in this situation. And then, you know, after you open them, that, that those tendons are sitting right there. And when you push them out of the way, they form that pseudo sheath uh, where they kind of want to sit in that area. So I'll roughen that area up. And to Ben's point, if you, you can use drill holes, you make sure you repair any tendon tears that you might have. And then, uh, you know, whatever your technique is for group deepening the groove and then make sure they sit reduced and that you can slide them back and forth without any signs of dislocation before you repair the SPR. Uh, how long great. how long you guys are mobilizing these so i'm i'm not as aggressive here when i do these as as i am with like just a perineal tendon issue um i'm usually at four weeks i'm beginning more sagittal range of motion uh but i don't begin ebers inversion until six weeks yeah i go to non-weight bears anonymous i keep them in a cast for six weeks Yes. <laughs> it's funny I used to do that and then we lost our cast tech so i can't do that anymore i like to move them earlier but i get a little nervous kind of maybe to what this is what ben's getting at uh you know of of concern for re-dislocating you know afterwards um and keeping them stable. Okay, here's another question, and and then we can kind of wrap it up. You know, what do you do with the patient that I saw a gentleman who was, because he was, you know, probably in his seventies and had dislocating perineal tendons and had a little bit of varus. Is that something you get pretty aggressive with fixing? A little bit hind foot varus in this situation. I know there's a lot more stress to the lateral aspect of the ankle, but sometimes they talk about you know splinting these. These, dislo these perineal tendon dislocations in a little varus because that kind of holds it uh, reduced. Now, maybe that's not good for the long term, but um, are you are you being as aggressive with your osteotomies in a case of perineal tendon instability dislocations? I am not. Yeah, that's kind of how I've approached it as well. Well, I think those are some really good cases. Um, uh, ben and Jan, thanks for getting on the call tonight. Uh, thanks to everybody who joined us. Uh, it's been an hour and I think we covered some, some really good topics. Um, anything else to, to kind of point out um, on the way out? Yeah, the one thing, you know, for, for the reps, I think for, um, on this call, you know, one of the things that if you see perineal tendons, it's not all about the suture. Um, you know, I know we talked about a little bit here, like what suture we use to fix it. You know, you know we need suture anchors sometimes available because a lot of times we find more um, then meets the eye as well as if we're going to do some type of osteotomy, whether it be in the first ray or in the calc. So it's going to have, you got to have the whole toolbox there. It's one of those things. It's not just always a simple, Hey, just, we need some, you know, ethabon or something. So, um, I really appreciate the, you know, my team who's always like, you know, they're ready to do an osteotomy when, when I'm just like, you know, uh, just doing something really simple sometimes. So they got the staples ready, the plates ready. So, and I appreciate that because you never know things sometimes, um, you know, fall through, not, you not to say fall through the cracks, but you know, you put in a, a staple for, I like using a, a staple for the first ray. Um, but then sometimes I've broken through the bone, mm -hmm. uh, with the staple. So then I have to plate it. So it's nice when you have options right of it available right away yep. to go ahead and do that. Yeah. What about like, one other thing I want to hit on, and um, you know, I think uh, that people are really interested in are these augmentations of the perineal tendons. You know, there are, you know, there's the bio brace. Their Ardalan has their flex band. Uh, you know, so, some of these kind of non allograft um, options. Are you guys using this at all for perineal tendons, Jan? That's a no. Uh, ben, any experience? Uh, no, I'm not. Um, and um, I, I will occasionally use the amniotic tissue stuff, but I've not used uh, any other stuff because I haven't had that much difficulty with scarring uh, of the tendons. But if it's a revision situation, uh, then I will tend to use uh, like the amniotic tissue stuff. And are you like wrapping that in a burrito? Is that kind of what you're doing around the perineal yeah. tendons? Yes, and I may use the new thing that's like a thinner thing that they've got a, a, a thinner one. I may start using that because apparently it's just got better working uh, characteristics. Okay, yeah. So you heard that, you know, that's a good option for the revision situation or, 
if there's some other reason you might be really uh, concerned about, you know, scar tissue um, in that in that setting and management. So, all right. Well, if there's questions, um, please reach out uh, to either of us or to each of us, and uh, I'll work on putting together a little follow-up newsletter. And uh, thanks everybody for joining us. That was a fun discussion. Thanks, Ben, and everybody else. Thanks, Nick. Yep. Great case. Thank you. Nick. Yep. Thank you very much, everyone.